I apologize for delaying your break, but um, I need to get home tonight so I can leave again tomorrow. Uh, uh, this is uh, Jerry. Jerry Kirk has been a, a warrior on this issue for more years than Jerry and I would like to admit. I think we were both young men when we started out uh, on this crusade. Um, I have a word for you. We're losing this war. We haven't lost it, but we're losing it. And if you don't think we're losing it, you spend time with college-age young people, and you'll find out that we're losing it. And I believe that pornography, hardcore Internet pornography, is the greatest danger that this country faces, that more lives are being destroyed, that men, especially their ability to be the husbands and the fathers that God intended them to be is being shriveled and shrunk and stifled and twisted and distorted by exposure to ever more hardcore Internet pornography. Uh, and we, you know, we've heard these... Uh, seen these articles and read these books about the extended adolescence of the American male and the complaints of women who, I, the most devastating one I heard the other day was in the New York Times. This one woman who's 30 years old said, she said, the men we meet remind us more of the children we used to babysit rather than the fathers that took us home. Ouch. Well, why is this extended adolescence? Because men are placating their sexual drive with, extent, with exposure to internet pornography. And girls are having to compete with internet pornography. And they know they can't compete with that fantasy. And it, it is pervasive. Um, and I'll tell you this. Internet pornography is in your church. If your church has got more than 50 members, it's in your church. And we in the ministry have got to talk about this issue. We've got to talk about this issue straightforward and plainly. Now, I'm the head of the Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission of the Southern Baptist Convention. And so I'm, I'm the person who gets these calls. I can tell you that hardcore pornography is on the seminary campus. It's on the Christian college campus. Uh, it's, in the pa it's in the pastor and it's on the staff. I can't tell you the number of heartbroken pastors that have called me. They've decided they want to reach out and minister to the community, so they want to have a daycare. Well, the insurance companies have gotten smart enough to know the first thing they're going to do is run a computer check on the church computers to see what the church staff has been looking at on the computer. I can't tell you the number of broken-hearted pastors that have called me when they have discovered what some of their trusted church staff have been looking at on church computers. My wife is a psychologist in private practice. Most of her practice is marriage and family counseling. And she and her colleagues will tell you that pornography is the leading cause of divorce in America today. They just routinely now ask the question, what have you been watching? What have you been looking at? And, 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 and the men are so surprised. How did you know? Please. Um, it is like, you know, it, it, the problem is that we have not become sufficiently aware. I'm glad this conference is going on. I'm going to get the tapes. I, I've, from what I've seen already, I need to, to watch them. But the technology has overwhelmed us. And people are seduced by the apparent anonymity. You know, I mean, people think, well, this is anonymous. I don't have to, I don't have to put on a disguise and go down to uh, uh, the uh, you know, adult theater. I don't have to put on a disguise and go out and rent a movie. And then even if I rent that movie, uh, there's a record of it. I can go online and it's anonymous. Well, it's not anonymous. First of all, the people whose site you're on know you're there. And these are not nice people. And as many people have found out, there's no way you can completely erase 
what you've been looking at on a computer. It can be recovered. It's not anonymous. And unfortunately, we've gone in two generations from a child-centered society, perhaps too child-centered. I say that as a, as a baby boomer. Perhaps my parents' lives and their friends' lives were too focused on their children. But we've gone from a child-centered culture in two generations to a child-abusing, child-neglecting, child-pornification culture. And we see this, we see in this, in this technology the, the, the fact that our government will not rein it in. Now, I want to give Congress credit. Congress twice now both in the Clinton administration and in the George W. Bush administration, passed pretty solid laws that would have required the same kind of standard and restrictions to get into a porn site that you have to have to get into an adult bookstore. You know, if you want to go to an adult bookstore, you got to prove you're 18. You got to show somebody some identification that you're 18 or over or you can't get in, and if they let you in, they will lose their ability to do business and they may go to jail. But twice now, after having Congress pass laws with a wide bipartisan margin in both the Clinton administration and in the George W. Bush administration, signed by President Clinton and then signed by President Bush, our Supreme Court has decided that an adult's supposed right to view anything they want to view trumps society's obligation to protect children from that which will do them great harm and damage. And, of course, if you had to prove you were 18 to get onto a porn site, it would take away that myth of anonymity and it would do serious damage to their ability to infiltrate our culture to the extent they have. I put it to you that we would have gotten a better decision by any nine people randomly picked from the Baltimore phone book than we got from the nine Supreme Court justices. I'm suggesting we need better Supreme Court justices. But they are, they are reflecting a view in our society. We've become an anti-child culture. And now what used to be restricted to the worst parts of the worst back alleys of the worst sections of the worst cities in the country is available anywhere, anytime to anyone who has a modem and can hook up to the internet. It's like a subterranean electronic river of spiritual toxic waste that is waiting to ooze up and envelop people. Now, we no longer have any argument about whether it's addictive. We know it's addictive. We know how it's addictive. We know how it rewires the brain. People who look at pornography, it rewires their sexual response so that they become focused on self-gratification as opposed to the gratification of their partner. They, it reduces their sexual partner to the level of an appliance. Indeed, it helps to explain why one could argue that someone was having sex with him, but he wasn't having sex with her. Depends on what the meaning of his is, isn't it? We have done a horrible job of sounding the alarm through the pulpit, through public figures, through our political leaders, through our cultural leaders. And this is an issue where we should be able to rally the women of America. No one is more victimized by pornography than women. It is, it is, it, it dehumanizes them. It, 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 it puts them to the level of a sexual appliance. 
It destroys their relationships. It destroys the people they would potentially have a relationship with. If the feminists really believed what they say they believe, they would burn these porn palaces to the ground. Nothing is more dehumanizing and more victimizing of women than hardcore pornography. And because of our Supreme Court, our children, when they get on the Internet, these people control to find, these, find our children and to lure them into these sites. People in my wife's profession will tell you that they're very concerned, even the, even the, the atheists and the secularists, because 14 and 15-year-old boys are showing up in their offices because they're watching pornography four and five and six hours a day. Now, it wouldn't do anybody in this room any good to go look at a hardcore porn site. But it wouldn't do anybody in this room as much damage as it would a 12 or a 13 or a 14 year old boy. Or girl, we're now seeing the pornification of women. Women are, women are now hitting these porn sites. Um, I believe that we are looking at, in the next 10 years, a a, a, a truly an avalanche, a tsunami of sex crimes against women and girls because we've got a generation of boys that have been exposed at, at an earlier and earlier age to hardcore pornography and the mathematics are a certain number who view it will become addicted to it, a certain number who become addicted to it will eventually act out what they've seen on screen and if you talk to people in the law enforcement business, they'll tell you whenever there's a sex crime, pornography's at the scene or in the car or in the home. Invariably. Invariably. And it's time that we tell these ACLU lawyers to sit down and shut up and butt out. Amen. Hardcore pornography is not protected by the First Amendment. And it is destroying our culture. It is destroying our families. It is destroying our children. And we need to speak up about it in our churches. Our pastors need to talk about it from the pulpit. They need to talk about it in men's groups and in boys' groups. And we need to talk turkey. Run from this stuff. I had a young woman... I'm interim pastor of a church, and she came to see me, and she said, I'm worried about my boyfriend. And I said, what's the problem? She said, well, he doesn't look at, 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 at pornography. All, of my, all the other boys I knew do. <laughs> I want to know if there's, you know, I'm afraid there might be something wrong with him. I said, you, you latch on to that boy, and you run from all the rest of them. <laughs> and I, I, we've got we've to have people who will stand up in public places and pulpits and say, if your partner is dealing with pornography, run. If you're married to him, you get him to counseling now or you leave him. That's simple. It ain't going to get any better without intervention. And you don't know where it's going to end. Now, you saw in the earlier, the earlier presentation on prostitutes, that one of the major one of the major things in the background of prostitutes is that they were abused as children we have an epidemic we what we've experienced over the last 30 years and we're just now beginning to figure it out is we've had an epidemic of child sexual abuse in the home now why would that be could it be that we've had more Males domesticated in homes with girls and boys to whom they're not biologically related than any time in human history? That is a fact. Because of rampant divorce and remarriage, we've had more stepfathers and more stepbrothers living in the same domicile with children and girls to whom they're not biologically related than any society in human history. 
And one of the results has been a massive increase in sex abuse, aided and abetted by pornography. Our government can do more about this, but they're not going to until we insist upon it. The only people who have more money than the gamblers are the pornographers. I mean, you know, our government can take out a loan from the pornographers, and they can take out a loan from the legalized gamblers. Those two industries have enormous amounts of money to buy the best legal talent, the best political talent, and they will, they, they, are, they will push on our political system. And until we push back, until we insist on it, our senators and our congressmen and our governors and our state legislators and our district attorneys are not going to do what they could do until we are prepared to push them and until we are prepared to back them. And it starts, it's going to start from the ground up. It's going to start with local churches. It's going to start with local communities. It's going to start with us understanding the dire threat that we face in hardcore pornography. It is literally uh, like a subterranean river of electronic, spiritual, toxic waste. And it is contaminating a whole generation of our young people. Uh, I think, I'm going to speak, in, I'm a Baptist, so I'm going to speak in spiritual terms now. I believe that the devil has figured out that the most powerful tool in his toolbox to destroy America is internet pornography. That there's nothing he can, he can get behind, there's nothing that he can, can support, there's nothing that he can try to promote that will have more negative impact on our society than hardcore pornography. And I see it, I see people whose lives have been destroyed by it both men and their victims, um, people who's, who have lost their marriages, lost their children, lost their ministries, lost their careers because of addiction to internet pornography. And I'll close with one story. I had a woman who was one of my trustees at the commission that I had elected by the Southern Baptist Convention, a judge's daughter. And after I gave a presentation on hardcore pornography, she came to me and said, can I see you privately? She said, as you know, Dr. Lamb, we have five children. And our younger four have been in the church. They love the Lord. They, they serve the Lord. But our oldest boy has been our wayward child. He's gone away from everything his father and I have taught him. And just last week, my soon-to-be ex-daughter-in-law came to see me and said, I think you need to know that your son has been and is addicted to hardcore pornography. And it started when he was 11 years old. He discovered an abandoned stash that the next door neighbor had left. He brought it home with him and hid it behind the drawer in his desk. And it was at that point that he began down that steep slope to depravity. And then she broke down and she said, I told my husband about it and we began to think back and it was just about then and our son became a stranger. It was just about then that he began to turn away from everything we'd taught him, to be rebellious, to be blasphemous, to be selfish. It was right then we lost our boy. It's like spiritual toxic waste that contaminates those that are exposed to it. And we've got to insist that our society do everything we can to stop that exposure from taking place. And that includes warning our young people, do not 
touch this. Do not allow this to contaminate you because it will destroy your soul. Thank you for being here. You're part of the army. When I was a little boy, we used to sing in church. I may never march in the infantry. We had you know, motions that went with it. I may never march in the infantry. I may never zoom over the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Well, I want to salute each one of you because you're in the Lord's army.